Your Excellency, uh, President Juma of South Africa, uh, Madam uh, President of COP17, um, Mabashane, and Ms. Christiana Figueres, Executive Secretary of UNFCCC, Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to be here with you today, and it's a great uh, honor to be part of this uh, momentum for a change. And I'd like to thank again the Ms. Figueres uh, for this very important initiative to raise awareness on the importance of a political, a political awareness of the importance of this climate change. At Lord Stunt, we've been working very hard since the beginning of my first term as a Secretary General. I learned a lot from him, the importance and seriousness of uh, this uh, climate change. Your excellent work has done much to a lot about the urgent necessity of addressing climate change. Again, I thank you for all of you, a strong commitment and participation. We are talking about this climate change, a momentum for change. Why then now? I was told that God somehow gives to each and every one of you some momentum, some chances. Whether you realize it or not, these chances may just pass. If you are not paying attention, if uh, for those people who grab this momentum, this chance, you will be successful personally or in your career or in your family. I believe that this is a momentum. There must be a momentum that God has given to all of us to change, to keep this planet Earth, the only planet Earth which, on which we are living. The only planet Earth we will have to hand over to our children, grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren in a more hospitable way, environmentally sustainable way. In that regard, this uh, title, Momentum for Change, seems to give us some inspiration. So let us not lose this momentum given by God. This may be a warning. This may be a warning. If we do not take this momentum, we will be losers. Not only we, but whole of our succeeding generations will be losers. And thank you very much for your commitment. Tackling it uh, will help us to achieve water, energy, and food security, and make progress on a broader range of issues such as global health, poverty reduction, gender equity, and global political stability. It's inspiring that uh, Madam President, I talk about the women's role. I'm one of the strongest champions. I believe I am, and I have been doing, to raise the women's status. And I've been leading by example in the United Nations. When you come, you will see how much changes there has been in terms of women's empowerment. Whenever I travel to Africa, I've been wondering what African men are doing. <laughs> I've been raising this issue, really challenging and confronting with the men. What are you doing? Look at what the women are doing. They, they give birth. <clears throat> Now, I'm giving a warning to all African men here. <laughs> but don't take it lightly to other men here. I'm giving you a warning. This world, this sky, is supported by half, half of the population. This uh, half the sky are women without the fully utilizing women's potential, we cannot make anything. This climate change is also. If we really want to make 
sustainable development, which will be a top priority of the United Nations for at least the coming five years, during which I will serve as a Secretary General. And then we will have to, under this sustainable development, we will have to uh, address climate change issues, water scarcity, energy shortages, and food crisis, nutrition, gender empowerment, and health issues, global health issues, healthy oceans, all those are all connected. If we fully utilize women's power, I think we will be able to uh, succeed. So let's work harder and harder. And I hope that uh, African men will take more role in uh, addressing all these issues. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in brief, uh, averting dangerous climate change is the key to sustainable development. Here in Durban, governments are focused on global solutions. This morning, I highlighted the four areas where we expect where Durban, Durban can produce and meet the expectations of the world. Uh, first, there should be implementation of all the agreements and decisions done at Cancun last year, including the adaptation framework and its committees, and also technology transfer center and network. And secondly, there should be clarity on the future of Kyoto Protocol. This is the only existing institution and this is the only rules-based system on which we have been working to address climate change. And there needs to be clear guidelines. Again, start of this short and longer term climate change financing with the launching of a Green Climate Fund, which was agreed in Cancun last year. And then my last message was that we should not forsake the joint vision, common vision of achieving comprehensive, legally binding treaty on climate change. Those are four things which we expect that Durban will produce coming a few days. That can be done if we are united, if we have political will, if uh, leaders like uh, President Juma, the president, prime ministers and foreign ministers, if they are united, if they have political vision, looking beyond the South Africa, looking beyond the African continent, every country leader should look beyond their own borders. This climate change doesn't respect borders, doesn't respect who you are, where you are coming from. They affect rich and poor, small and big. Therefore, this is what we call global challenges, which require global solidarity. That's why we are here together this evening. We need national action on the ground, too. We don't need, you don't need to wait until this legally binding comprehensive agreement will be realized. It has been a painfully slow process. It may be so, coming a few more years. But I will try to pound, I will try to beat the drums to raise a political will on this. Now, on national action, at least 118 countries, half of them developing countries, have put in place some form of national policy target or renewable support policy. Such action will complement and help advance our multilateral task. But all of us, not just the governments, have the power and responsibility to make difference. That is the message of the Momentum for Change Initiative. By showcasing public-private partnerships that are tackling climate change and improving the quality of life for people, you are showing what can be achieved. By taking inspiration from the initiative's lighthouse projects, we can take, we can take great strides towards 
avoiding dangerous climate change, and building the future we want. The UN system is not only backing the Momentum for Change initiative, it is also helping to implement some of the projects showcased here today. I thank again the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for their strong support, and I commend the UNFCCC Secretariat for this initiative. I hope you are all inspired by these projects, by what you have seen in the videos, and I strongly encourage you to participate in this initiative by pressing your own. Together, we can change this world toward the world where you want, in a world better for all, where everybody can live without any fear of want, without any fear of threat coming from this climate change phenomenon. I thank you very much for your leadership and commitment. Thank you.